Hey, what's up with you guys? Hey, welcome back to another video. Now, this is going to be my TBC prep guide. We're going to be going through all the ways that I'm prepping, getting ready for the expansion or the re-release, I should say, of TBC, as well as what I'm going to be playing going in to the launch of TBC talents and all of that kind of fun stuff, going over some of the changes coming to Balanced Druids with the Burning Crusade, um, and hopefully uh, clarify some things that people might have some misunderstandings about. Now keep in mind this is all for prep and the launch of TBC. We'll have all kinds of guides and theory crafting and all that fun stuff once TBC goes live and we start getting into the nitty gritty of the Burning Crusade. Uh, so keep a lookout for that. Feel free to hit that sub button, like the video if you find this helpful at all, but let's go ahead and get into it. Now, first and foremost, I should talk about my plan for the initial leveling because that kind of sets the stage for what I'm trying to do and my mindset and all that kind of stuff. So I intend on leveling at least the first few levels just dungeon spamming with uh, some people. I don't think we're going to be doing this all the way up to 70, but at least to get out of the initial zones because I imagine that Hellfire Peninsula is going to be really, really tough. I play on Herod, which is one of the highest population PvP servers, and there is all kinds of PvP. So I do imagine the beginning portions of uh, Hellfire Peninsula and Zinger Marsh are going to be really, really chaotic. So just to give you guys an idea on kind of my plan is that we're going to be doing dungeon grinding. So that's kind of the, the perspective that I'm coming at this from. Now, if you're a Druid player, you know what it's like to have full bag slots and full bank slots and no room for anything because you have all kinds of gear. So I've spent some time over the last few days and we've cleared out a bunch of our items. I've basically sold the entirety of my feral set for the most part. Um, and so that would be kind of my first big tip here is to really go through and spend some time cleaning out your bags in your bank with things you're not going to need in TBC. Now, some of these pieces are a little bit tough for me to get rid of just for nostalgia's sake or whatever it may be. Uh, for example, I'm holding on to my full rank 13, rank 12, rank 13 PvP gear, holding on to my full tier 2.5 gear. And then I have here, uh, these eight slots right here is my full tier two. I did vendor my full tier one set um, as we don't really need it for anything. And honestly, it's pretty easy to get at this point. Um, and so that's kind of my, my game plan here. So I'm intending on going balance at the launch. I want to keep hold of this full tier two set in case we're doing these dungeon runs and we do need a healer i will still be able to heal in my balance spec uh if i just throw this gear on i honestly could probably heal with the gear that i have on but that's why i'm holding on to this tier two um and i'll probably keep the tier two in all honesty like these full sets tier one i'm kind of like and eh, it's like not super exciting to me but the other sets that i get i kind of am, i'm probably going to keep these you know special spot in my bank for those now the other thing that you see here is i have all kinds of trinkets now trinkets are unique in the sense that even if they don't have a lot of dps value especially like the engineering trinkets or things like rocket boots these these trinkets or items that have very unique effects like the rocket helms i'm keeping track of those for now and keeping those in my bank because those will be a lot harder to replace later on the mats are not going to be super common for some of the classic items especially like the engineering reflectors and all that kind of stuff so for me personally i'm really putting some value in holding the trinkets and the engineering items any of the kind of weird you know utility type items i'm keeping those for the time being and that's probably like a quarter of my entirety of my bank there's still some stuff stuff in here like i could go ahead and get rid of like the uh the tarn Elven ring right some stuff i just haven't gone through but i really wanted to clean out my bags and make enough spots uh, for all the other stuff so that's the idea here so i'd really encourage you to try and get as much of your bag emptied out as possible now i still have a handful of consumes here the blessed wizard oil which i don't know if we'll use this at all but i figure we might have some use for this at the launch of tbc and then just some other random stuff here now i do have some items here now these are intentional in that the reason that i have these set up now the gear that i have equipped right now i have the three piece of the pvp gear this is giving me that 15 percent bonus movement speed while outdoors in cat bear and travel form now this is kind of like my go-to pvp set with the only exception here is that i will uh you know i swap out my pvp trinket this is my go-to pvp set so in the event that we go into TBC and there's world PVP and we got to kind of battle our way to get to the dungeons and do all of that fun stuff, 
that's why I have this kind of set with me. Once we get into the dungeons, I basically would be using this same set, but I would basically just be subbing out those PvP pieces as they're not very good when we're talking about DPS and how they're itemized specifically as a caster DPS. Um, and so we have our more optimal PvE DPS items set up for when we actually get into the dungeon. So those are basically the two like pieces of gear that I have. I do think I'm going to keep the PvP gear on me because I could see there being situations out in open world and going around the world that this is going to be helpful. Now, if you guys did not get to rank 13, you can definitely do the same thing with four pieces of the rank 10 gear, like the blue PvP gear, because it's a four set bonus for that set. So that's something that I think will be worthwhile, at least initially, until we kind of get to where the entire player base is in like one or two zones, right? Once everyone kind of starts spreading out a little more, it won't be as chaotic, but I think having the movement speed is going to be a really big thing for you Druid players, and I would highly encourage you to keep one of these sets with you in some form or fashion so that you can rock the four piece or the three piece set bonus if possible now the other thing that i have here is this is actually a setup that i used a lot uh, in when i was ranking in battlegrounds uh, so i have the taut dragon hide gloves with the mount speed enchant i have the defiler's boots with mithril spurs on them now you'll see these have another equip uh kind of like enchantment on them for run speed. So this will basically act like you have the run speed enchant as well as the mount speed enchant via Mithril Spurs, which is why I specifically use these boots for this setup. And then I also have the carrot on the stick. Now this is the kind of like the, the maximum mount speed. I believe it's eight or 9% mount speed that you gain with this full setup. It doesn't seem like it would be a lot, but especially going into a new expansion where we don't have any of the flight paths and discovering these new zones and adventuring through the world, the vast majority of that is gonna be on your ground mount. So having your epic mount at 100% move speed with these is going to be very significant over the entirety of the leveling process. And again, another three items that I would really encourage you to carry with you, or at the very least have in your bank ready to go if you decide you want to go ahead and grab them. This might not be stuff you wanna carry around 100% of the time, but I don't think it's really that big a deal to have six bag slots. And like for me, have the flexibility of my mount speed set as well as my outdoor movement speed set for like PVP type stuff and basically I have all the bases covered. Only other thing I have in here that we kind of mentioned briefly was the PVP trinket. So that's the only other thing kind of worth mentioning. So um, anyways, that's kind of my, my set and my gear and all of the stuff that I have kind of ready to go into it. Now I have one stack here, the wild thorn root for going ahead and buffing in those dungeon groups. And then I have some ironwood seeds for battle reses if we do need them, but we won't cause no one's gonna die. Um, and then yeah, a couple pots, nothing exciting here. The other thing I have is the gadget um, teleporter. I just figured this might be helpful if I need to get back over to this part of the world after we go to Hellfire. That's what, what my thought process was. I think this is probably worth uh, a bag slot um, and so yeah that's kind of my intention here now all these four items i would be fine deleting but i'll probably just use them like you know once we go into our first dungeon i'll just go ahead and click them all or whatever so going in with a good chunk of gold empty empty bags ready to go ready to loot ready to spam these dungeons and level up now that's pretty much it when it comes to kind of the way that I've organized my gear, my items and all of that stuff. Keep in mind, like I had said, I have my full tier two and I highly recommend you balanced druids know how often we need to be healers for our friends. So have your healing set ready to go in some capacity. A lot of this stuff you will replace early on. And if you don't have great gear, it's stuff that you'll be able to accumulate relatively quickly, especially if you're filling uh, as like a healer in these groups but you know being able to throw on full tier two if you have it is going to be a really big help and just kind of ease of leveling if you need to spam some dungeons early on to bridge the gap of a level or two or help get some rep up because remember we're going to need those keys to run those heroics that are going to be locked behind rep uh now last kind of portion of this video i wanted to go over is the changes to balance druid specifically now like i mentioned i'm going to be going into this expansion playing balance i definitely anticipate on healing some portion of this especially while we're leveling in the initial gearing um but that being said we're going to be specced into balance and i'm really fully committing to balance so there's some changes in the talent trees that we need to talk about because some of these are really significant and are going to kind of change what you're going to be wanting to do. Keep in mind, this is my build that I'm going to be specced 
as I level and go in to the initial parts of TBC, I highly anticipate I will be playing different builds once we kind of figure out, you know, how much do I want to prioritize PvP? Is dual spec going to be a thing? Because they've kind of like hinted at that maybe being possible. So there's some things up in the air, but I wanted to give you guys a good talent build if you have, you know, like a level 55 druid and you're wanting to go balance, that you have kind of a good idea, a good base, a good understanding of the talents and what's significant and what you should be prioritizing in your initial adventures into the TBC. Now, the first five points are going to be in Starlight Wrath. This is in a changed talent to some extent. It used to be Improved Wrath. It basically has the same effect that it did in Classic as it relates to Wrath. However, it's also going to reduce Starfire by a half a second. This is going to you know, basically take the place of the Starfire cast speed reduction that used to be in Improved Starfire. And so it's kind of a, a little bit of a, a change here in the way that these talents work. So if you're playing balance to any capacity, you need to have five points in this. Now we're going to go ahead and put two points here into Focus Starlight and two points into Improved Moonfire. Improved Moonfire is just gonna give it an additional 10% chance to crit and is gonna increase the damage by 10%. And Focus Starlight is going to give our Wrath and Starfire an extra 4% chance to crit. So these four points, very good, very, very straightforward. Now, a lot of people really like Nature's Grasp. You are more than welcome to go Nature's Grasp with this build. I am going to skip it though for the initial portion of this video. And we're gonna put one point in control of nature. Now, this used to be improved entangling roots. It basically functions exactly how Improved Entangling Roots did, but it's adding Cyclone to the tooltip. So keep in mind going into TBC, we have the new ability Cyclone that is going to be really significant. This is, I think, going to be a necessity to run three out of three points in this if you're doing any kind of PvP at least as I'm anticipating it right now. So um, we're going to go ahead and just put one point into that for now for leveling sake. Then we're gonna put one point in Insect Swarm and two points into Nature's Reach. Insect Swarm is now a balanced ability and can be cast while you're in Moonkin form. So this ends up being kind of uh, an integral part of our rotation as the debuff slots are up to, I think, 40 debuff slots up from 16 in Classic. And so we do use this as a core part of our rotation, assuming mana allows for it. Um, and we'll do a lot of testing on this, so don't you guys worry about that. But I would imagine going into this that all of the previous testing that we've done regarding mana efficiency, relative DPS output is going to be similar to what it is. But Again, we'll test all of this stuff, but Insect Swarm is a very big part of Balanced Druid in TBC, and you can use it in Moonkin form. It does not break Moonkin form, so big improvement there. Now, I'm going to put two more points up here into Control of Nature to get us down to the next row, maxing this out so we have a 100% chance to avoid interruption when casting Entangling Roots and Cyclone. This should be something that's pretty significant, just out in open world questing, getting mobs off you, you know, minions or hunter pets or whatever it may be. This is just going to be really valuable and really helpful. Now we're going to put five points into Vengeance. This is going to increase the crit damage of our... Uh, spells so just we definitely have to have this we'll come back here to celestial focus but this is entirely changed this has the starfire stun effect like it did in classic and now has a, a different effect where it lets you avoid spell interruption or knockback while casting wrath so this is something that's very good but we'll skip it for the time being as it's not absolutely essential for leveling now we're going to put one point here into nature's grace this is the same as it was in classic and moon glow is actually the same as it was in classic giving us nine percent mana reduction to a lot of our major abilities now lunar guidance is a new talent that we get this is going to increase our spell damage and healing by 25 percent of our total intellect i'm not exactly sure what this comes out to numerically and how much actual value this is but it's just good all the time so there's no reason that we shouldn't put, put three points into this so um just keep that in mind this is good if you're off healing this is good for dpsing this is just all around a very very strong talent now we're going to put five points here into moon fury this is going to increase the damage of starfire moonfire and wrath i don't know if this is changed in tbc if it's still the base damage of the spell or if this does scale with our bonus spell power i'm not sure so we'll have to test this out and see but either way you still want to go ahead and take this now i'm going to put one point here into moon conform this is pretty different moon conform changes a pretty significant amount as we go in to tbc now if we look at classic moon conform you can see the tooltip here is this is increasing my armor by 360 percent and it gives us the crit aura of three percent bonus crit 
In TBC, it is up to 400% bonus armor and gives us a 5% crit aura. So it's pretty significant overall buff to Moon Conform. We also have a couple of more nuanced uh, things being added into moon conform which i'm not exactly sure when or how we're going to be able to utilize these or if at all but we are gaining 150 percent of our level in attack power which is kind of weird and then our melee attacks have a chance to regenerate mana based on our attack power if i remember correctly there's a lot of um a lot more of a lot more items that have like the the feral kind of attack power type stuff or like druid specific attack power um and so for that reason i think this might have some relevance i am not sure how useful this is going to be though we'll have to test this out this is something i'm really excited to get my hands on and kind of mess with but just keep that in mind pretty significant changes to moon conform specifically now, I skipped over balance of power, and this is going to be something that you are going to probably want to pick up early on. Uh, this is going to give you, with two points in it, 4% increased hit. Now, we have a brand new hit talent that we are going to get access to. This also reduces the chance we're hit by spells by the same amount, 4%. So, in PvP, this is something I think you're going to want to have 100% of the time, and same thing in PvE, just because hit rating is so important. Um... That being said, this kind of changes exactly how we were going to be trying to gear while we're leveling up in the initial levels of the Burning Crusade as hit's not going to be so important for us on our gear because you're not going to be killing mobs that are five levels higher than you, right? So then we'll talk about Dream State here. This is going to regenerate 10% of our... Ten, the mana equal to 10% of our intellect over five seconds while casting. So similar to the reflection talent in some form or fashion, it still does actually exist, but it's got a different name now in the resto tree. Uh, but we're going to always want to be picking up dream state. Now, improved fairy fire is very significant if we're talking about a raid environment and if you have a group of people that you're running with regularly that rely on this buff. However, for leveling sake, this is not very valuable to us. So we are going to skip this until we get to level 70 and figure out what talents we want for our specific raid group then we're going to put five points here into wrath of scenarius where starfire gains an additional 20 percent of your bonus spell power and wrath gains an additional 10 percent now at this point you're basically full balanced druid okay the, the points that i don't have are trance force of nature which is the summon three trance for 30 seconds this is a cool unique talent and ability it's not super high impact in a lot of situations. Um, it's hit or miss in PVE, given the fact that your trees don't have a ton of life, but it does have a lot of value in PVP as like a knockback kind of thing on casters specifically. Um, but I am gonna be running this for sure going into the initial parts of tbc but we'll have to see how valuable this is i can see with tbc the way that the talent points work now we can actually get moon conform and nature swiftness so at the same time right so you have to like sacrifice points so we'll have to see what we have to give up and what kind of builds we can come up with with uh you know with the additional increase of 10 talent points um but anyway this is something i am going to take initially but you know tbd if this is really significant and useful and if we end up taking this very often or not now i should talk back here on celestial focus this is going to give us like i said a 15 percent chance to get a starfire stun in classic the stun duration i believe is longer oh no it's for three seconds i thought it was for four seconds in classic um so this is stun duration is staying the same, 15% chance with only three points instead of five in this. And this is also going to increase the knockback resistance on Wrath by 70%. So that's pretty significant. This is going to be a really big talent in PvP, allowing you to basically continually be able to cast Wrath if you have, you know, melee or hunter pets or things like that sitting on you. Um, and so this is going to be kind of my cookie cutter build and setup for balance. Again, you can, you're at level 56 at this point. So you're not even at level 60. Once the talents reset and everything goes live, this is what you'll be able to get. Assuming that you're level 60 or even within a couple levels of 60, you can go this full balance setup and have all the points you need to excel as a balanced druid. Now, for me personally, going into this, I'm going to start putting points into the resto tree now if we put four points here into improve mark of the wild that does get us to level 60. that being said we get up to level 61 62 63 we start leveling quickly we now get into the second row here of the resto tree now 
generally speaking, if you're out in open world, nature shape, natural shapeshifter is going to be really big. But if you're healing dungeons, you're going to want to get naturalist for the healing touch reduction. I'm not worried about taking this initially because if we're rocking full tier two, we have the you know improved healing and spell power from lunar guidance. We have the mana regen from dream state and we have, you know, like our full tier two set on where we should be fine to heal any of these dungeons initially. Then if we're having issues or we're healing a lot and not DPSing very often, then you can start putting points into naturalist that'll allow you to be a little more optimized for healing in these dungeons. Then we can go down here and put three points into intensity for the 30% mana regen while casting. This is also has the improved enrage kind of baked into it. Um, so it's a little bit of a new talent here, but this is like your cookie cutter setup. Keep in mind, if you don't want to take Treants early and you don't want to take Celestial Focus, you can get to this point a lot quicker, right? You can get five points into Naturalist by level 62 right and you could also potentially take some points out of this if you wanted to like if you thought you're going to be just mostly healing or whatever you can mix and match so depending on what you're doing in your group and your squad and how you're leveling up in your role you can feel free to to play with this and mess around but i just wanted to kind of show you guys what i'm thinking early on i'm not worried about getting five points into naturalist right away um it's not really a big concern to me so i'm probably just going to go something like this i also think it's going to be valuable to have fortune nature force of nature even if you're healing in dungeons it's gonna be like free damage you're gonna be able to throw out even as a healer um so yeah maybe three points in the celestial focus we wait on because that's not going to be super important early on um, until you get to where you're like questing and doing a lot of solo content so anyway this is kind of the generic initial setup that we're going to be doing for talents uh, and then once we hit uh here let me show you once we hit 70 this is what i would actually do um, I would be something like this, right? And I put three points here. You can put this point here, one in nature's grasp. Either way, you can kind of mix and match this, but this is more or less what my build is going to look like as soon as I hit 70. Once we get 70 and we start doing content, we'll tweak this and we'll have all kinds of build guides and stuff that I'll be posting. Um, but this is my, my plan going into TBC. Now, one thing I want to mention that I did not touch on on the gearing is balance of power. This talent is giving us that 4% spell hit the majority of all the mobs you're going to be attacking are going to be within a couple levels of your character, right? You're not going to be out at level 60 and trying to kill something that's level 66. It's just not going to happen. So you're going to be very close in level to a lot of the stuff that you're killing, which means having like five or 6% spell hit is totally fine for leveling sake. So with getting the free 4% spell hit from this talent, which you will have at level 60 when the talents reset, you want to make sure that you're not going in with your full raid PVE optimized boss fight DPS setup where you're rocking like 12%, 14% hit is not going to be optimized for open world content. So that's part of the reason, and I didn't really explicitly state that, but that's part of the reason why I'm going to be using the tier 2.5 set and some set that's going to give us some, some gear that's going to give us some more, some more stats, right? Some more int, some more stem, just a little bit beefier all around because we don't need to have more than a few percent hit on our gear because we're gonna be getting that additional 4% from our talents, and generally we're gonna be killing stuff around our same level, and four, five, six, seven percent should be more than adequate for leveling. It should be totally fine, and um, so just keep that in mind. Don't over itemize for hit because it's gonna be wasted stats for leveling sake. Okay, so the last part of this guide is that going into tbc we're gonna have access to new abilities we know that right now going into it you're gonna be in moonkin form and you're gonna have access to things like insect swarm you can cast innervate in battle res while in moonkin form you can uh you're gonna have access to cyclone right we're gonna have some new abilities that we're gonna be using regularly and it's important that you have keybinds set up for those already now you don't have to have them bound right like you don't need to create the macro for it or anything but it's important to understand where your keybinds are currently with the current abilities that you have and what you're going to have access to and where you want to kind of preemptively have all of that stuff set up to bind 
You don't want to get into launch day and be trying to sit there and mess with your bars and spend all this time trying to figure all this out. So for example, I have entangling roots here on Q. If I really want to make sure that that's going to be my cyclone button going into TBC, I should switch this key by now, start working on that muscle memory, start getting used to it now so that you're not having to relearn key binds at the launch of TBC. We know it's coming, get ready for it now, set up your key binds and everything in anticipation for the abilities you know you're going to have access to and that you're going to be using regularly. So Insect Swarm and Cyclone, the most prominent ones that come to mind, be ready for those and set up your keybinds accordingly. This is a great time to really do some housekeeping, get your bank cleaned out, get your macros set up, and do all of that work now so that when launch day it comes, you don't have to spend time doing that while your friends are leveling and you can hit the ground running. So hopefully this helps you guys. Let me know if you have any questions like always down below. I'm super excited for TBC. I'm hoping you guys are just as excited as I am. I hope you guys are ready for all kinds of balanced food content going into TBC because it's going to be a lot of content coming out and I'm super excited up for it so thanks so much for hanging out guys like always i do appreciate it and i will catch you guys in the next one see ya